What is going on, everyone? This is your OTS 8 podcast for February 9th, 2024. This is part two of our SHOT Show 2024 recap, where we're going to take a look at some things that we didn't take a look at before and a little bit more detail of a couple things that we did look at before because we now have some more details on that. So before we get into that, I want to tell you, if you don't mind, go check out the otsarange.com. It's my uh, official website. That's where you can find my store. You'll also see merchandise from my store below all the videos. Uh, you'll see a little merchandise area with my t-shirts and stuff. But if you go over to the otsarange.com, you can go right to the store from there. It's a totally revamped site. Everything is all integrated into one site now. Uh, it's something I've been working on for a while. Finally got that done. And uh, yeah, you can go there, uh, see some news. And then, of course, the store. There's a forum, a discussion forum you guys can jump on and join in. It's all free for that. And uh, yeah, check out the otsarange.com, please. And so with that said, let's go ahead and get into our SHOT Show 2024 Part 2. We're going to kick things off with Bara. Okay, so here we're looking at the 1100Z, I think it's called. And this is a wood-stocked version that we're looking at. So this is a new one. The 1100Z PCP air rifle. And it now has a Turkish walnut stock. This will be a model with a Turkish walnut stock. And uh, you'll have a sling swivel and all that stuff on there. And uh, yeah, so that's interesting. That'll be a nice little piece to have if you guys like that model. Keep in mind, this is coming from Stephen Archer at Hard Air Magazine, this coverage. This coverage is directly from Stephen Archer at Hard Air Magazine. You can always count on him to uh, show us the latest and the greatest when we're at SHOT Show as far as air rifles go. And keep that in mind, folks. Anybody out there that may be listening, this is an air rifle, air gun channel, and we're only going to be covering the air guns that were at SHOT Show. So, all you firearms folks, love you guys. I'm a firearms guy, but this is not the channel for that. So, keep that in mind. But if you're interested, then stick around. Next up, the one that we did see in the previous, that we talked about in the previous podcast. Now, we know the name of it. And that is the Bara 250Z. It's a PCP air rifle, like we said, that has the tube is actually around the barrel. So it's the barrel shroud is the tube, is the tank, basically, for this gun. Which I find very interesting, of course, because that's the case. The gun looks a lot more sleek, a lot more like a regular rifle. It may be more appealing to firearms folks to get into air guns. You know, maybe they don't like the look of the big tanks on guns or... Some of the weird way PCP guns look, or even air rifles in general. Obviously, brake barrels and CO2 air rifles look a lot more normal. But as far as PCP goes, yeah, this might be appealing to them. And I think it looks great. They're saying it's going to be, you know, sometime later in 2024. I'm guessing maybe fall, because it's currently only in the prototype stage here. But I'm still very, very interested in this one. For sure. I think they're saying it'll come in 25 caliber, 22 caliber, 25 and 22, I do believe, something like that. But uh, yeah, so definitely looking forward to this. But yeah, that's the name, the Bara 250Z. There's an externally adjustable regulator, that little brass screw you see there in the center in between the two gauges. It does have two pressure gauges. And in between that is your adjustable regulator, which is pretty cool. So... If you were wondering if it was regulated, yes, and it's adjustable with that. So, there you go. Here's another one from Bara. Uh, I don't see a name for this one, but it is a pistol. CO2 pistol, of course, BB pistol. Supposedly, it's going to have a very strong blowback effect, combined with around 350 FPS muzzle velocity. So about in line with most, but a very strong blowback. So I'm interested about that, you know, because some of these CO2 guns have a, a weak blowback or a half blowback. I'm curious to see how strong this one is. I know the Sig Sauer 1911 We the People has a full blowback, like very strong full blowback, very similar to the firearm counterpart. So be interested to see what this one turns out like. Uh the new model here is a plan to have adjustable sights. Now, that's interesting because a lot of these don't. 
So this one having adjustable sights is definitely uh, a nice touch, to say the least. So that's uh, that's what's going on with Barra. Now we're going to move on to Hotson. We looked at, uh, we knew this was coming because we've been talking about it. But this is the Jet 2 QER, a.k.a. the Jet 3. Everybody's been waiting for. But, you know, like I said, it's coming over to America, so they got to tinker with the name. Of course they do. But it's the Jet 2 QER over here in America, Jet 3 overseas. Uh, the main thing is, is that it is regulated, and it comes with the removable buttstock. The barrel is shrouded with an integrated silencer. And, and interchangeable, the interchangeable dual HPA cylinders, which is normal for the Jet 1 and 2. Uh, so, yeah, Jet 2 QER, a.k.a. the Jet 3. It is coming, but we still don't know exactly when. I'm guessing soon, because it is on Hotson's website, Hotson USA, but nothing yet. Nothing yet. Now we're taking a look at the new version of the Hotson Blitz. This is the Hotson Blitz, an updated version with a bigger HPA bottle for more shots per fill. That should be interesting. I'd be curious to know the exact size of that, but we don't know yet. Obviously, it, it looks to be about maybe a quarter of the size bigger than the normal one, so that'll kind of give you an idea. Apparently, this is labeled 777. As you can see right here, whether or not that sticks with, you know, that name sticks, who knows? We'll find out. Uh, no real word on when this is coming. But we'll see. Uh, I can't imagine it's too far off. Am I going to get one? Probably not, just because my Blitz works fine. But for those of you out there that have had trouble with the original Blitz, uh, maybe this one might appeal to you. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see what reviews say. And uh, who knows, maybe I will get one if it's still in kind of like the same price range. We'll see. So that I can compare and say, oh yeah, this one functions a lot better or whatever. We'll see about that. Not 100% sure I'm going to get one of these, but you never know about me. Here we see some of the guns on the wall here. Obviously the Blitz is on the bottom there. Uh, on the top uh, is the Sniper Long, the Factor Sniper Long. That one's uh, kind of crazy looking. Below that is the Flash Q, uh, the Flash R QE. It's a regulated version of the Flash with a side lever action. Uh, nice price around the 300 range for that one. So that's a nice little price point for that one, I think. Full size rifle, the Flash R QE, regulated version. So yeah, there's that. If you were a fan of the original Flash and you were like, oh man, I uh, want a regulated version. Well, there's one coming soon. And now we're going to move on to Umarex. And what you're looking at right now is what they are calling the big brother to the Umarex Nodos. This one being called the Zelos, or the Zelos, or the Zealous. However you want to announce it, I'm sure. <laughs> However you want to pronounce it, I'm sure somebody will, uh, you know, correct me or we'll hear exactly what it's called. I'm sure it's said in a video somewhere. Zelos, Zelos, Zelos. Hey, I say things the way I want because you know why? Because I can. Because <laughs> I can. Anyway, the Umarex Celos, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, yeah, they're saying it's the big brother to the Nodos. And that tank on there looks pretty big. So that should be interesting. I probably will pick this up, depending on the price point. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to be around since it's the big brother. Um, Let's see, probably around what? Four to five hundred. I'm going to say 450. How's that? Let's say 450. It might be around there. You'd be lucky if it's 350. That'd be great, wouldn't it? If it was like around 350, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, the Umarex Zelos is big brother to the award winning Umarex Nodos. It's become so popular in a short time. The Zelos is a regulated side lever PCP that's to be available in 22 and 25 calibers. High capacity magazine holding 20 rounds in 22 and 18 rounds in 25. That's cool. Obviously a big step up as far as capacity and all that good stuff. But yeah, the Zillos, Zelos. It says about it, the 3,625 PSI HPA tube is fed into the action via an adjustable regulator. This regulator can be set for pressures between 1,000 and 2,000 PSI. 
The result is a maximum muzzle energy of 26 foot-pounds in 22 and 36 foot-pounds in 25. So there's some details for you. Next up is the Umarex Gauntlet 2 SL25 or SL22. SL standing for side lever and the figures, the caliber, of course. Uh, Pyramid Air is actually having this up for pre-order already. So if you guys are interested in this, that's up for pre-order. They're expecting it in early March. So this is the Gauntlet 2. Okay. Uh, what is so different about this compared to the Gauntlet? I don't know. I guess the side lever action maybe. Um, maybe a couple other little things, but, uh, yeah, that's the Gauntlet 2 SL in 22 or 25. Coming soon, at least. At least they have an idea when that one's coming out, right? Now, last but not least, in the Umarex department, we are now looking at here what they are calling the Umarex Iconics. They're going to kind of compete with Crossman here because this is looking to be a low-priced PCP. It's going to be about $30 more than what Crossman's, Crossman's aiming for at 160 And it will be available in 22 caliber only, whereas I think the Crossman will be in 177 and 22. I, I think. I uh, can't remember exactly right off the top of my head. But it will be available in 22 caliber only. It's a compact design, this one here, the Umarex Iconics. And uh, side lever action, 8-shot rotary magazine, fills to 3,000 PSI. They're saying muzzle energy is around 26.43 foot-pounds with an 11.9 grain pellet. So, of course, you can expect more with the heavier ammo. Uh, yeah, the Umarex Iconics, a lightweight compact model. Very interesting indeed. So, they're already kind of right on the heels of Crossman to compete with that budget realm of pcp guns and most likely and i already said i'm going to end up getting that crossman 3622 of course and uh or will i get no you know what i'm going to get 3622 i love 22 caliber and being that this umarex iconics is also in 22 i think we'll stick with 22 that way because i probably will get this one as well and uh then we can really do a comparison and whatnot doesn't really say if it has a gauge on it because we know the Crossman 3622 does not have a pressure gauge. So I'd be curious to know if this one has a pressure gauge on the gun. Doesn't really say. I'm sure somewhere in a video somebody looked at it and showed it and whatnot. I don't want, I don't have time to watch a lot of videos. I have to make my own. <laughs> and of course record this podcast and then my normal daily life that isn't involved in any of this mess. And all kinds of other projects that I do. So I don't have a whole lot of time to sit down and watch a lot of videos. So when I'm doing research like this for the podcast, I just kind of go to news articles and things like that. Hard Air Magazine. I know when we're talking about SHOT Show 2024, Stephen Archer's pretty much on top of things as far as uh, what most important things to look at are. So that's why we're kind of following his lead here as far as that goes. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there on the YouTube world, you know. I know Air Gun Detectives did a lot of videos on it. I haven't really gotten a chance to watch a lot of them. Like I said, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't have a chance to. Uh, so I didn't really see much on this one other than this article here. And uh, I'm very interested in it. Yeah, Umarex is right on the heels of Crossman for the budget line of PCP rifles. I really like the design of this one. You know, the carbine style, the modernized look and all that. Looks like it got some pick rail and all that good stuff on there. So, yeah, we'll definitely end up picking this one up. I, it's right there. It's that budget-friendly price range that I promote so heavily, you know, off-the-shelf air guns. We'll be able to walk into a store and find this off-the-shelf. You know, that's interesting. Being that they're at the price points they are, the Crossman 3622, 3677, and now this Umarex Iconics around its price point, you know, obviously under 200 uh, I'm curious to know if we will be able to find these on the shelf at our local sporting goods store or anything like that, maybe Wally World, you never know. Uh, I would be curious to see if we can we end up finding these on the shelves because I know that a lot of these places, they don't carry anything that's too crazy priced. You know, it looks like they usually try to keep it 200 or under. Some places do like 300 and under as far as what's on the shelf that you can buy when you walk into the store. So I'd definitely be curious to see if this uh, these end up being Stuff that we'll see when we walk into the store that we can buy right off the shelf. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Have some hand pumps for sale right next to them and all that. And uh, 
get people uh, started into the PCP world and see what that's all about and see how uh, cool it really is. When at the beginning, I didn't even really go into the PCP world. We kind of all went on the journey together here on this channel where I kind of started getting into it. I had messed with them before in the past, obviously, but now we're kind of really heavily into it. And uh, that all kind of happened after this channel was born, to so to speak. And uh, once again, on a side note, for those of you out there that don't know, this channel is inspired by Backyard Plinking and Charles. Charles passed away in November of 2020, I do believe it was. And I love the guy uh, a lot. And... This is just a way of carrying on his legacy. I'm not, I'm certainly no Charles, but I am me and I'm giving you it in my style with a little bit of Charles mixed in, you know, just in honor of him because, uh, yeah, man, <laughs> my son and I really loved him and, uh, it's just a shame that he's gone so soon, way too soon. So like I said, this channel is in honor of him. It's inspired by him. It's to carry on the legacy of what he was doing. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying that. I know I have people that came over from his channel. And yeah, that's all I can say is I hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing. I'm obviously taking things to another level. We're advancing. We're growing. We're doing it different. Doing things different every time. Changing it up. Advancing. And like I said, taking things to the next level. Every single step of the way. Building the OTS army up. And we're going to keep on building the OTS army up as big as we can possibly go. So that's pretty much it for today's podcast. Once again, if you don't mind, go check out the OTSARange.com, my brand new website. See what you think while you're over there. The store's there. If you feel like it, you can go ahead and pick up a shirt, a hat, all that good stuff. It's all right there for you if you want at the OTSARange.com. And I really appreciate it. Once again, you can also find the t-shirts and all that stuff. Below every video, there's either a slider. You can see the little slider with the t-shirts and stuff like that. Or you can go into the description and they're listed there as well. And all those will take you directly to my store. Once again, that's the OTSARange.com. Like I said, the store's over there. You got some discussion forums if you want. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. So with that said... I will catch you all down the road. Mm -hmm.